Manel Shevitz, what a wine. <laughs> Do you remember that? Man, oh, man, oh, Shevitz, what a wine. Good evening. Hi, I'm Chef Jojo Napoli. I'm your self-proclaimed home chef. And tonight is Passover, so we're going to do our own little version of Jojo's Seder. I'm going to finish up here. We made a beautiful chicken matzo soup. I put two matzos, and I'm going to bring these over to the table. And Linda made a beautiful table. And we're here to enjoy this beautiful Seder. I can't help but think of our brother-in-law, Don Cooperman. Don Cooperman came into the family. It was a wonderful marriage between Don and Linda's sister, uh, Andrea. Don is of the Jewish faith. We're all Catholics. And I remember when we attended the Seder at his home, uh, how wonderful Don is to explain the tradition of uh, the foods. His was much more elaborate. I know it's Passover evening, but you think we can call Don and let's call Don. Maybe he can explain some of the foods, a little bit of the history behind the food. Hello. Oh, hi, is this Don? This is Don. <laughs> I'm always excited to hear from my favorite brother-in-law. <laughs> okay, so of course, happy Passover to happy you Passover. and to the extended family. I know during these troubled times that uh, people are less prone to getting together in big groups, but I'm sure you're doing something and connecting with your family. Well, thank you so much. We always celebrate all of the holidays in a family tradition around the dinner table. Well, you know, Don, I don't know if you're aware of this, but as a self-proclaimed chef of multicultural talents, I prepared a little Seder for me and Linda tonight. I felt like I'd fallen short in explaining a little bit of the history behind some of the foods. And I'm wondering, would you be kind enough to take a few minutes out of your Passover and just talk a little bit to us about some of the things we're cooking tonight? I'd be more than happy to see if I can fill in some blanks. <laughs> okay, perfect. So okay, we've made beautiful matzo ball chicken soup. Maybe you can enlighten uh, us a little bit about uh, some of the backstory. The tradition of matzo, which carries into matzo ball, is that the Jews fleeing from bondage in Egypt didn't have time to leaven their bread. They had no leavening. And that turned out to be matzah, which became a traditional part of the uh, Jewish remembrance of this period of time. Matzah ball soup is as traditional as you can get in Judaism. Chicken soup is the universal cure. It's been known to heal all types of so that, is, that, that carries across every holiday. My wonderful cook, Italian wife, who has learned to make matzo balls with tremendous expertise, said that forming the matzo balls is very similar to making meatballs. It's a beautiful thing. And that's right. We live in a in a unified world, especially nowadays. Now, with the bread, it's not bread, but it's just, what is that called? It's unleavened bread. It's unleavened and bread. Jewish people Is the tradition that you just break the matzo or? There's a tradition to have it broken into at least three pieces. And now what significance right. does that have, Don? One of those pieces of matzo would get hidden. It would be get wrapped in a napkin and it would be hidden. And that piece is called the apikomen. And the, and the children at the Tina would look to find the apikomen, the hidden piece of matzo, and that has expanded to be numerous pieces of matzo. And in exchange, when they would find it, they would bring it back to whoever was conducting the theta, who would then give them a monetary reward for having found it. So it was a way of getting the children involved in the Passover theta. That's beautiful. I hard boiled a couple of eggs, and I have them in a mixture of water and salt or a brine. Now, uh, I know we had spoken about this, but can you explain a little bit about the hard-boiled eggs and the salt water? An egg is a symbol both of Passover and of Easter, and it represents um, the eternity of life as a rebirth. You know, these holidays come in the springtime, which is a time of rebirth, and the egg symbolizes that period of rebirth. And life goes on infinitely, no matter what's going on at the particular era. And that's represented by the fact that the circular, oval nature of the egg has no beginning and no end. So it goes on infinitely. The salt water that the egg is traditionally served in is done to remind the people who are participating in the 
remember their joyous times. In the Seder, the salt water represents the saltiness of tears, which represents the sadness of those people who suffered in bondage and slavery. I prepared a little, like almost like a little salad, consisting of cut up apples and walnuts, and we're going to pour a little bit of wine on top of it. And what? Excellent. What you're preparing is called chirosis, and it is really the Hebrew name for mortar. It represents it, it, it represents the mortar that was used to keep the stones together when the Jewish slaves were building the building the pyramids for the pharaohs. So it's a reminder again of the period of enslavement, and it's also sweet. Uh, which is again a mixture of the tragic with the sweet. And it's just very simple and natural. There's no sugar added. And it is part of the tradition that a little piece of matzah is broken off and that corrosive, that mixture, is put on the matzah and it's passed out to everybody who's attending the Seder so that they can eat of that and partake in that part. Wow, it's even better with the matzo. And then, speaking of sweet, I happened to find a container or a package of the uh, coconut macaroons, which are, you know, really sweet. And we had those on the table. I'm just going to point them towards the camera so you could see them. And does the macaroon and the coconut have any significance in the, uh, the story behind the Seder? Not really, but the back word is traditionally used because there's no leavening in the baking of a macaroon. Mm -hmm. And it, it does provide a sweetness and an appropriate dessert. Well, let me tell you something, Don. While all of these things, especially the desserts, might provide sweetness, nothing provides the sweetness that you have by attending our Seder with us. I wish you were here with us. Linda and I love you very much. We do. And we miss you seeing you and Andrea and the kids and we look forward to the next Seder which is going to be spectacular, Don. Finish off by saying uh, Jesus Pesach, which means the happy Passover and L'chaim. L'chaim. I'll drink to that, to life. All right. Thank you, Don. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful Passover. Same to you. Come on, come on. How unbelievable with that. I'm Chef Jojo Napoli, and Lahayam, happy Passover, and we'll be back.